ahead and get started. Y'all join us. We are light to the word of prayer. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for watching over keeping us. We do pray God for the wisdom and guidance as we get into the business of the county. We ask Lord for uh, your blessings upon us as you see fit. Be with our communities and those that are grieving today. We pray for our neighbors down south and the troubles that they have seen called uh, lots of destruction there. We just pray, Lord, that you'll uh, make resources available for them that they can rebuild and reap and get back to their lives. We pray for those that still got people missing in that mess. We just ask that you would be with those families. And God bless and help us today and forgive us, Lord, where we may be. In your name we ask. Amen. All right, we'll go ahead and have a pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you can be seated. Thank you all. Uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and call the meeting order. It means the October 16th, 2024. And I have Mr. Buck more read the minutes of our previous meeting. Son, I'll do it. Okay. St. Gabriel called the meeting order minutes were approved August 8th, 24. Motion by Vaughn, second by Baker. St. Gabriel presented the surest 2023 tax settlement review. Motion by Vaughn, second by Todd to approve. St. Gabriel presented the foundation for Appalachian Kentucky $10,000 jail grant. Motion by Vaughn, second by Baker. Shane Gabbard requested approval from the Sheriff's Office K-9 Coda to be surplus from county <coughs> property. Motion by Vaughn, second by Todd. Shane Gabbard requested approval to accept all tax and districts rates to be printed on the county property tax bill. Motion by Todd, second by Vaughn to approve. Shane Gabbard presented the Library Liberty, <laughs> oh, that library. Liberty Cemetery Road Resolution. Motion to approve by Todd, second by Baker. Shane Gabbard requested approval to hire Caleb Spence as county finance officer at 56 cents an hour. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> motion by Todd. <laughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> second by Baker. And Shane Gabbard requests approval to hire Michael somebody for the occupational tax <laughs> trash service clerk position on a 90-day probation period. Motion by Todd, second by Baker. Shane Gabbard requests approval to pay requests made for the Big Hill Center project totaling $90,748.70. The county will receive reimbursement once the payment clears. Motion by Todd, second by Bond. St. Gabbard requested approval to pay invoice for Plex E grant for the Lake Summit Plex project, $10,000 with 100% reimbursement from the invoice. Motion by Lon, Sigma Todd. Paving estimate for Anvil Park Pickle Court was passed until the next meeting. St. Gabbard presented the treasurer's bills and transfers. Motion by Todd, Sigma Baker. Motion to adjourn by bond, second by Baker. Set the next meeting today. All right. Thank you. I have a motion to set the minutes. Agree. Motion. Second. All right. Uh, judge's report. We get on down in the agenda. And I'm part of that. I can just say, I'll let print off with a couple of the judge's report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so on Saturday, September 28th, Jackson County Public Library hosted a public meeting on the development plans in Blue Park that we have been awarded the funds to develop. The preliminary name of the project is Lake Summit Place. <clears throat> the name is subject to change at a later date, and the meeting was facilitated by State Representative Timmy Truitt. Representative Truitt and Senate President Robert Stivers were instrumental in Jackson County receiving funding for this project. Funds allocated to Jackson County is four million dollars for this project. <coughs> also in attendance was Sandy Dunahoo from Nesbitt Engineering. Nesbitt and Mrs. Dunahue designed the plans that we submitted to the state legislature. 
in order to ask for funds that we're receiving for this project. Design plans were funded by ARC mini grant, which we were awarded for the cost of these architectural plans. We displayed these plans at the meeting with preliminary designs in order to take public input on what they would like to see in a project like the Summit Place. The meeting was well attended by the community and many ideas were shared and discussed as well as documented for plan designs. One topic of discussion is how the funding would be reported and where it would go when it came in. The Jackson County Fiscal Court has an account set aside for projects like this called the State Grant Account. First step is to submit a budget to the Department for Local Government and pass a resolution to request the funds. We have completed both these steps. I submitted those to the DOG and they sent me back a memorandum of agreement. I have signed the memorandum of agreement for this project and they have emailed me back confirming it has been received. The next step will be DLG sending us a check for the $4 million we have initially been awarded. Once that check comes in, we will deposit it into the state grants account and move forward with purchasing the land. The land is located on the Cameron Ridge and is approximately 100 acres more or less. We'll need to get the land surveyed by a licensed Kentucky surveyor and then we can pay for the land. Once this is complete, we will contact the forester to see if any timber can be harvested from the land before we begin clearing for construction. We anticipate the excavator utilities, initial preparation of the land, to start constructing a parking lot and a pavilion. We'll take the majority of the funds out of it. We'll know the exact cost. We will not know the exact cost until each part of this process is bid and then awarded for work. I plan to report to the court and public as each transaction is made for this project. This is an exciting project for Jackson County. We'll be having more public meetings seeking input as we go along. Those meetings will be announced and we will be encouraging the public to attend. So that's my report for the day. Uh, Danny's out, uh, away from home today, so he couldn't be here. They will start with you on the district report. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready for winter. I'd like to thank uh, Truett and Stivers for helping us over our district on some uh, projects. So, yeah. big help. We couldn't do what what's uh, been done without them. I appreciate it. Yep. Right. Uh, we just uh, <coughs> trying to get some of the gravel roads gravel and get ready for the bad weather gets here. Yeah. It was freezing thaw in it. Get in bad shape pretty quick. Yeah, I heard it. All right. Sure, if you got a report. Uh, it's basically business as usual. Calls are rolling in. And we average probably around 7,000 complaints that we respond to a year. Uh, but this is our third week collecting taxes, and that's going really well. People are getting in early to pay them. And other than that, a new deputy hacker, Bob and Hacker, we got him scheduled for the academy February 23rd, I believe, is when he starts. He'll be gone about six weeks, or six months, I'm sorry, for the academy. Back. All right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Brian is out in a training event today, so we don't have a jail report. We'll move on to the agenda. Uh, election equipment cameras quote. Uh, one of the things that the state is requiring now is the election equipment to be in under uh, in under video surveillance. We got a camera last year to put back here in this room where the stuff is stored at, but it doesn't, it, it records, but it, it don't have any way of keeping a, uh, it, it, don't, it don't have a, I guess you'd say, it, it, you can watch a live view of it, but it has no word. It's basically a live view camera. Isn't that be good? It don't, have any, it don't have any storage. And they're gonna and put one in here. So. Duck got a quote. Because we've got these things here, and then after the election, see, we still have to keep them on the camera. Yeah, they have to stay under video days. surveillance. So we've got a quote for uh, a system installation from uh, uh, for these uh, for these uh, cameras, and I gave you all a copy of that quote, I believe. Thank you. So, uh, so what and what's required is we have to upgrade 
to an MVR that records up to 60 days. And uh, after that's done, uh, we'll move the recorder to the office downstairs. They secure it to the lockbox. And it comes with a eight channel megapixel real time network video recorder, 4K output, 8 4 PoE switch. That's all above my knowledge on what that no is. I idea what that means. I don't need it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, this is, uh, I'm assuming, Doug, what the other counties are using for their election. It is. Storage. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have a quote for it here for $2,825.77. That's from Tuckiana. That's for one, one camera. That's for one it camera. It goes up here because we've got to record all these machines. Yeah. Make sure nobody misses. Didn't we do that last time? Have a camera on? In that room over there. Yeah. That's where, yeah, where we count the absentees and all that. It stays on 30 days before and 30 days after. Yeah, and then it's got to be locked in a box for 60 days. Yeah. It's part of the new lakes and laws. It saves everything that goes on in there. You can pull it out and review it if you need to. I don't think it's necessary, but that's the state. We do what they say. So uh, the estimate is $2,825.77. That's, that's not, you know, it's not that crazy. But. We're going to try and get by with just the one camera. If we had to get three like they recommended, it would have been $312 a camera. Yeah, I told my student Okay. So one is 2,500 and uh, additional cameras 325? Yep. Yeah, see the, the one camera is, is How about we'll get the, the second camera and forget the first one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wanted to put one down there in the main office and put it back in the license and stuff. But I said, that's not necessary. Yeah. 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 We check it, two of us together, and we sign it, bring it up here and put it in this box it's on the camera so there's no need to have double takes. Right. He was outrageous but that's okay. That's all we could get. Motion. <clears throat> Second. All right. Thank you. You don't hear that. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that? Finally. Second. Uh, Item A, pay the county election workers for general election on November 5th. Uh, we always put this on the agenda that way. When the day's over and they're done, we can go ahead and get them paid. They ain't got to wait two or three weeks to get the pay. We'll be here before you know it. Uh, just a few <laughs> weeks around the corner. Yeah. Yep. So, got that on there. Motion. Second. All right. Uh, I've had an item G estimate for courthouse breaker, and we've had a uh, I've had several of the employees here from uh, ask me, you know, if we, we really have no word to eat dinner and they have no word to take any kind of breaks. And uh, uh, so I, I had Wilder Construction come up and look at this corner over here and basically in the front of that old part of the uh, box there all the way back, they would box that in and make a break room out of it, a place where employees can sit and eat dinner in their peace, things like that. Uh, we, uh, with the uh, Wilder Construction, Kenneth Wilder came and gave me a bid. He'd be putting metal studs, doing all the, everything, basically a turnkey job. Uh, he, he priced it for $26,964. Uh, I mean, I can get more estimates if y'all want me to, or, if it's under if it's under thirty thousand, you don't have to bid it. I know that by state procurement, but uh, that's a bid. That's an estimate we can accept and move on if that's what we want to do. But uh, uh, I know we have no we have no space whatsoever left in our office down there. We're, we're covered up. We don't either. And, on what we're going to do? And hey, we're just you know we're, we're covered up. We ain't got no work for them to. To even take a, a break. According to labor laws, you're supposed to give them so many breaks, you know? and we ain't got we ain't got no work for them to go unless they want to go outside. And some days it rains. Some days, yeah. yeah. Some days they get real rain. Probably, but uh, that's finished job. That Kenneth Kenneth is is went in construction. And Kenneth's been in this kind of construction, drywall and framing for a long time. 
It's a you guys order the thing. You got size, huh? Uh, well, let's see. Let's see. I think well, I you don't have to measure. No, I think it's right oh. here. I think uh, right here's the. Uh, let's see. No, I don't hit. I don't have it. I'm on the picture of the list, and he sent me. Uh, he just sent me a picture, but it don't have to break down the size. It's basically that corner over there. It, it comes out. He'll come out and run down that. Are there a heater over there? There is a heater. Over there. So you want to put the heat in there? Oh, well, there's a heater over there. <clears throat> Which that's something that we may have to look at. Uh, they they warned them is that's one of them. It's the only one we got left that's working. And the top mm -hmm. unit, the big unit, heat and air, it's going to quit. What about Brian these plugs? When are you going to fix them? Oh, we'll be here next week. Next week? Yeah. See, we hope the election starts when? Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, I'll be here next week. All the plugs are sweet up here. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's an old building, you know, oh, in 1950. Say it before you're old. My, my father wired it. Oh, your damn wired it? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Well, that's interesting. Could you give him a phone call to come start this out? <laughs> uh, we, yeah, it, we, all we think there may be a, a war or circuit back there somewhere, but none of them blues have any kind of use on And the breaker's good. Nothing wrong with breaker. There's a breaker in that attic. That's, I, I couldn't believe that. I don't, know, I don't know what it would be for, really, unless there was a roof ventilation system at one time or something. Box, Jeff, go up right back there and get up on the roof. That's the access back there. Yeah. And then we got a breaker box up in that. Area. Back in 2015, we had a real heavy snow, and, <coughs> and we ended up coming down here one night, and there's a waterfall running right down that wall yeah. where the roof had busted loose. I that. Oh, man, it was a mess. But anyway, yeah, we're going to have to make some room somewhere, you know. We can't occupy that building according to the way that's set up. So yeah, it might fall in too. <laughs> in all reality, this building is probably built better than that thing. In is. all reality. Yeah. You could set a fire in here and it collapsed. They they do. that that building where they slap them together so quick now. I don't know that they built as good as what the old one is. Two times the crowd wants to build a few years ago. Anyway, we can get, I can get another estimate if y'all want to, if you think we need to. I can get a couple more and just okay. uh, go ahead and approve the we'll just project as long as it don't see that. And we table you know, it to the next meeting? Yeah. And motion to table it. Yeah, get a couple more and get it, get it going. That's a, that's a good idea. It needs, needs to happen. Okay. All right. You want a motion to table it? Baker already did. I'll say it. All right. He's on the ball. Uh, next is our employee health insurance contribution. Uh, this is difficult, guys, because insurance for everybody has went up. We've got three different options here uh, from what we can do as far as contributing to the employee's rate. Uh, we right now contribute $800 a month per employee plan. We've got about 30 employees that's on health insurance. Uh, if we kept that rate of us paying $800 a month, uh, if we kept that rate, then the out-of-pocket for the employee would go to it would go up to it go up one hundred fifty dollars a pay period. So it would probably cost several of them to cancel their health insurance. That'd be three hundred dollars a month. Three hundred dollar increase. Thirty five percent increase in health insurance. Uh, oh. Humana ain't in the state no more, and United would quote us and. This health insurance is based on claims. And we've had a couple employees, as you all know, pass away. And they had a lot of claims before that. And it's the nature of the beast. It's just the way the health insurance industry goes. They go on claims in our group. You know, in no way, form, or fashion. Don't take this the wrong way. I sure ain't. I'm glad they had insurance while they were sick. 
before they passed away, and I, and I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. Uh, but in all reality, when you're based, when you're when your rates are based on a group, if you got somebody in a group that's sick, it's going to make your rates higher. And that's very unfortunate, but that's the way it is for any group. Now, when you get in, we can, we can uh, enter the healthcare pool with CACO. CACO has Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but we don't have a say in what we pay. They send us a they send us the thing and say this is what you're gonna pay every year. We don't have we can't we don't set our contribution rate, they said it. That scares me because <clears throat> it's a lot bigger network, but still yet they pay a lot more towards their contribution to keep the employees coverage from being so high out of pocket. Now, <clears throat> if we raised our contribution to eleven hundred dollars per employee, that would keep their what's coming out of their check the same, but we figured it the other day, Shay, how much was it gonna cost us? 117,000 a year is what it would cost us. For the extra, extra, for the extra, extra yeah. it, it, if the If the, if the 30, 30 employees keep their health insurance. Uh, unfortunately, health insurance is growing by Medical costs and medical costs are not getting any cheaper. Um, it's unbelievable what it costs to have tests done and things now. So, but anyway, in any sort, uh, right here is the comparison. But you can see right here is what it would cost them on the, if we kept it at 800 There's the pay, per pay period. If we went to 1100 it would it would cost them the 56 like it does right now. If we went to a thousand, it would cost them one hundred six. Basically, double. But if we keep ours at eight hundred, it would trip what they pay. Go up one hundred fifty dollars per pay period. Uh, and and again, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Uh, I'm glad that our employees that were sick had had evidence from copies. Uh, and it's unfortunate that they both have passed away. So it'd be extra nine thousand a year. Is it? Uh, no, it'd be it's, it's three hundred dollars a month times thirty. It's nine thousand dollars a month. Right? Am I saying that right? That's a lot. I think it. So you pay twenty-four thousand right now a month, right? Yeah. Go away from it. Um, right now, right now we're paying eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred times thirty is you have twenty four thousand. So if we paid eleven hundred, eleven hundred times thirty, that's thirty three thousand. So that's a nine thousand dollar month increase if we if we went, you know, two times that for twelve. That's a hundred eight hundred eight thousand dollar increase a year if we if we what if we contribute three hundred dollars more per month to the health insurance. Yeah. And that'll leave them that that what will they be paying extra if you do that? They won't be paying nothing extra this So that just right. cover the cops or yeah, that's it's basically covering the cops, yeah. Like I say, we got about 30 people that's on coverage out of a little over 100 employees. And like I say, Humana has, has pulled out of the state of Kentucky. United would close. Uh, so Anthony's basically the only option we got. Uh, and Justin, our agent, Al Lexington, he tried to get tried to get United to close, and they would close after that. Day. Thing. I, don't, I don't think the employees can hardly afford that. Three hundred dollars a month more. No, no, no. That's uh, you, at the way cost of living is right now. And, and it's just it, it, well, I mean, like we was talking about it, and, and I'm sure Duke see in his office. There's been a, a pretty big increase in, in auto insurance. I think it's about thirty-five percent. Yep, mine went up fifty percent. 
Yeah. I don't know that. why, but it did. Yeah, and, and that's probably going to go up more after these storms. You know, they're going to have unbelievable climate. Well, I called them and they said that was part of it. I said, yeah. what's that got to do with us? I think it's really statewide. Statewide United network States. Yeah. yeah. Nationwide network. 50%. So open enrollment starts when? Next week? And then yes. it lies how long? We're in open enrollment. And it'll end, end in October. October. End October. Oh, it ends in October. Right, Jay? Uh -huh. Yes. That's huh. Well, it won't be much time, but. No. Yeah. 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 But 108,000. It's a lot of money, but it's spread out in a year's time, it makes it a lot easier. You know, you pay it, we pay it per month, so it makes it easier that way. And, and in our employees' defense, they don't make a lot of money. Uh, you know, we pay them what we can. We're doing the best that we possibly can, but, and the ones that have insurance, I hate to jeopardize their insurance. Uh, I think we can make it work budget wise. We just want to tighten up and stuff. Uh, me and Chase been looking over. Caleb, he's fresh and got this though in his lap. But welcome to the world, Caleb. <laughs> Make it work because, like I say, we have tight new ones sometimes. That's 36% increase. Is that what you said? 35 35 percent, I think. Wow. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, it's not just us, it's every, every, oh, yeah, it's every, every body seen that in. Our, my wife carries our, in our health insurance through where she works at, and uh, they, they saw an increase in weight for education, so it's, it's everywhere. They're in the state, but still, I mean, you take all the, there's, there's a whole lot of claims filed through that, and you take all the, everybody that's in that one big plan in the state, and there's a lot of claims filed through that. So that Definitely make it work, motion. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, we're going with the uh, increase. We're going to be paying $1,100. All right, now, uh, me and Shay run up on this the time clock for employees. Uh, this is the same system that the city uses. One problem that we have when we go to doing audits is trying to find those timesheet records for each. You know, they'll come in, when the, when the auditors come in, they'll come in, they'll say, Give us the timesheets for uh, this department for so and so weeks, and then we have to go through mounts of papers to find them. Uh, give me the timesheets for the sheriff's department for so and so deputies on this and that. Well, the city uses the time clock system, and uh, this system, what it does is when they get, they log into it, and their supervisor will, will also have their login information. That way, when they clock in, their supervisor gets a notice that they clocked in. So, by, yeah, let's say we have somebody go in to work at the road department and they clock in at 755, we'll get a notice down here that says they've clocked in, they're at work. And uh, so, what that does is it all keeps it in one, it compiles all that data, puts it in one place. So, when, the, when it comes time for payday, instead of wrestling around trying to get timesheets, and trying to, you know, uh, make sure we got everything in tune. 
you, you hit a button, it prints it off for each employee, there you go, you've got it. It saves you a lot of time and aggravation, and then on the audit side of it, it cleans up a whole other part that, you know, of, uh, ever since I've been here, we get brought up for that, not having, what's it called? Uh, uh, not segregation. segregation. It's not segregation of duties, but it's, you ain't got enough people. Overseeing. Yeah, you ain't got, you ain't got enough people. You don't ever have enough there's, people. There's enough. There, it's always you, in, a, in, a, in a small government. You can't know, afford to have enough people to do that. But here's the thing. If somebody comes in and they say, uh oh, uh, I forgot to clock in, they can call us as long as there's verification. We can get the system and clock them in. And, uh, but I think once they get used to this, it'll be a lot better. And it will make sure we're getting the time before the trip. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing we sure to talk about that, that we, uh, it, it's hard to keep because there's a lot of times that you, you know. You might forget to fill the time sheet out. Yeah. And if you make memories about like mine, you may not remember yeah. that you worked yeah. 42 hours or 38. Another yeah. thing we talked about was like road crews and my guys get called out, trade yeah. the road or you know, yeah. get called out to a domestic. You know, they can't really clock in because you have to be within a certain area before you can, well, like their own apartment. Yeah. They can call their supervisor. Yeah. And the supervisor can fix it. Yeah. So if one of my guys get called out at 2 a.m., you know, they're not being able to clock in, I can fix it the next day for them. Yeah, they were out, and I can confirm that through dispatch. If they were out for two hours, I can check dispatch. That, yeah, that goes the same way with us. If we can't yeah, call in, say it's three cross the road, and we have to call one of our guys, they they've got a saw in the truck, and they don't want to have to run thirty minutes to get a saw. Then we can we can fix that in the comp time. It's got a place you can do that. In. And I believe <coughs> the accountability that this will create for every individual. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the accountability factor really can be good. It cleaned up a lot of them. Uh, you know, you 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 brush up on your soft speed real quick and you get time clocks in. Uh, it's twenty eight hundred dollars to install it, the system, and it's a thousand dollars a year maintenance. And they come in and they maintenance make sure that it's you know they upgrade your system if you need new clocks. That's part of it. But uh, uh, the city loves it, they, they, which they don't have near the employees we got, but they, they, they love it. Caleb, probably tell us a little work. bit about that system. You worked at the city. About the time clock with the yeah. city? Yeah, there's multiple ways you can do it. Usually at well, your base operations, like here at the courthouse or at each road department district, you can have a main time clock. Then there's also an integrated app that you can use with Android or which is Samsung and all those, or Apple, which is your iPhones. And it was a very effective system, and it kept tracking. I mean, you can even change and set what hours you can't clock into. Like, you could make it to work 8 to 4 even on specific branches of employees or anything. It's got massive controls you can use with it. And Super effective. Like, with the Sheriff's Department, you know, whenever you walk out your front door, you're basically, well, you're 10 eight, you're clocked in right there. So you're not, you're not having to run down here to the courthouse to clock in. Your phone will be set where you can clock in as soon as you get within that geographical area that it will allow you. <coughs> so you have to be 10 miles from the courthouse before you can clock in. Once you're 10 miles, it'll let you clock in and it'll let you do it before. So if you're in Madison County and you're like, oh, I'm you can't clock in, you get close to the courthouse or, you know, within the county. Right. So that's, a, that's a, something me and Shay have been talking about a while. It'll probably help us a lot on, uh, on uh, uh, keeping up with it better. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah. So bring it all. That's, that's a minimal cost, really, for, yeah. Promotion. Got a motion? Second. Right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the bills are transferred.
I say the voting machines. The, how much that? It's on there. We owe ES and S about seventy-eight thousand dollars. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, and we got to start paying them. If they That's take us off, then we can't have election. Now next year, this will be happening. There is no election. Yeah, no. none. You get a year off. Yep. Yeah. So that'll give you a break. Election is outrageous. I know it. Like they get high That's every year. Money. That's crazy. Yep. But you don't realize what goes into one of them machines right there. Daniel can tell you. Everything in the world. It's unreal. Them things are fast. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Four or five of them up here the other day working on them. There's four of them. Four of them. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't get time to come back in the morning to finish it. That's why I've got to have this blocked off. Yeah. That door and that door and that. Yeah. Somebody could really mess us up right there. Yes. I don't think they would. <coughs> they could. But once we get this camera, them days are over. And nobody needs to be up here at all anyway. I know they have a lot of meetings up here, but they need to find another place. I don't think they have that many anymore. They've started using the conference center at the extension service yeah. a whole lot. Good. Yeah. That's about to that's become the meeting place. See, we don't have anywhere else to put these machines. Yeah. That's it. Now, the ones we use on election day, we put them back there yeah. and lock that door. And nobody got a key here except me. But that's risky business, buddy. Anymore, with the Biden and Trump are pouring all the time. So yep. Scared to death, they'll get cheated out of the vote. Come on, You got a motion to proceed to leave? Motion. Second. All right. Comments and answers? Yeah, let me leave. Yeah. I was talking about a road back in here last year in April. You yep. had over 300 signatures. You've got copies of this. Uh -huh. And uh, this year in April, we stopped up here. I had a bunch of people came up. We met you downstairs in the hall during the next, and they talked to us. The following week, you had the meeting, came back, you had paint on the road for it to be uh, uh, five o'clock. Yeah. And it's, uh, well, that, that'd be great. I'd love, like to see it happen. But it's been, the, the paint is gone. The year's gone by. August, you told me that it was going to be blacktop. They were going to do it. And it's not done here. Winter's coming on the road. You took blacktop down there and put in where the culverts was. It's rougher than what it was before the blacktop. You dropped some blacktop down, scraped it back and forth with your snow plow on the truck, and that's it. And that's all we, we've got. We've still got chug holes, potholes, big time. Yeah. And people break. I got people coming in from out of state. They're breaking their cords in their tires, knocking their front ends out of alignment, breaking shocks off the vehicles because of the road. Uh, I'd like to see the contract you made with the Allen Company for that, yep. as you said, be if you have to get a copy of that, because there, there should be a deadline on that. If there's a, a road department or any kind of contract, you have a deadline. That deadline, if they don't have that done by that date, they are penalized for that. That's the way I've always seen contracts done. And I don't know if you had that on the contract or not, but this has been going on for two years now. Another winter's coming and going, and we're still beating our cars up. But yet you stay. A lot of money from the taxpayers that go over here and you've got this rally race going on, you've got all this other stuff going on. I got papers here of how much money the county has got for the road department right here. First one. Judge Gabbard, Andy Brashear, bigger for road for uh, road, county roads uh, refinished. Which road was right there? It's in the paper. And we've got nothing back there. The paint is gone. Discretionary road. Oh yeah, that was for Buffalo. So when you see okay. them, when you see them uh, designated road, it's on the road you put. Okay. Has, has, yeah. been, uh, has yeah. there a contract for this to be done? And this is over so a year. The uh, way the contracts run on that, Bobby, is we we set out for bids for a bike. Okay. Here. Show me the bid you got. Which you've already painted the roads. And this is a, I was up here at another meeting. A lady came by and talked about a road down here in Tyner. Mm -hmm. Which a friend of mine lives on. I just went to pick my tractor up. Yeah. Two about you know, a little two months ago, a month and a half ago, there was brand new paint. I went back to pick my tractor up. They got new blacktop. Yeah. He owns a logging company. He's up and down the road with his logging trucks all the time. That's probably Big Barn. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then, then okay, the state, and then, then you look at all these the other barn. logging companies around. Yeah. You go, you take Madden, you take, you used to log. That road's never had 
uh, tore up like we do back in here. Yeah. And we've been driving on these roads for 10 so 15 the that, years. So the way that works is we set out for bids every year for black top. Okay. And, and we got the bids in. So when we when we submit bids, we don't know how much the black top's going to cost on each road. So once we get that figured out, okay. we said we submit in, we get them to come down and measure. So they measure and they turn us in the list. So we turned in some patching on Lake Street. So they're coming to do it, but they're working on the other side of the county right now. We got one contractor that it's awarded to, and they have to be a state certified licensed contractor. We can't just let anybody go in and do it because it's state money. So as soon as they get worked that way, they're coming down that way. It just took them a while to get there. They've had all this work going on up in okay. San Gap on, on uh, 421. Well, you know, that's that's uh, fine. But like, you know, Lakes Creek Road ain't the only road. We got yeah. Salt Rock and Wind Cave back there also. Yeah, they're going to do some, they're going to pull a patch on some of Lakes Creek. I don't know exactly how much of it. Well, and that's Salt Rock awesome. back there. These yeah. people have been driving, tearing up, and, they, and they, those roads need to be fixed too. If you spend yeah. money on all these other things you've got, all this money, yeah. but, you know, the people still tearing their cars up. We, we're, we're people too. Yeah. You know, and it, you know, and it, that, just like you dump that back there and dump that blacktop on them culverts where you replace, you know, that's just a slap in the face to us. It's rougher than what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just uncalled right. for. Is you that the way? Is to, that the way that? Is that the way your people work? You know, we don't know. We're not. We're not getting anywhere. You have to. You have to change them culverts out before you before you put the blacktop down. If you don't, you have to give them time to settle. They're going to be rough. To oh yeah. Well, they're yeah. just like the potholes. You could take your jail workers, get some, and go out there and put blacktop in the potholes till they get here. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't be that hard. I see them out here at uh, Horns Tire one day shoveling black or gravel off in his parking lot from the state. Yeah. And you can't get somebody back here to shovel some some blacktop well, in these potholes. You. you once a, once a, once a contractor gets there to fix the road, it'll be you know it'll be took care of. Okay, when's that going to be? Because we got another that's winter comes up, and freezing and thawing, and that, every time I get anything be, done out there, I got to come out here to do it because it, nobody's driving these roads back it, in there. It'll be it'll nope. be done. It'll be it'll it'll be done this year. I don't I can't give you a set time because right now they're working on the other side and they're working their way back this way, and they started back today, and uh, so. They, once they get done over in Anvil, they'll start back here in McKee and they'll get it done and they'll go to San Gap and get it done. I anticipate You're going Bobby, to I'm hoping, Gap and passing this up again. No, no. I said they're going to be over there, then they're going to be in McKee, then they'll be in San Gap. Okay. Yeah. Now that's completely up to the contractor. Weather's are playing in that, you know, you can't blacktop. Well, you're going to block, shut the blacktop down here pretty soon because it's... Well, if they've got work to do, they will not shut it down. They're the ones that's making it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another thing i got, how do you uh, pick the people for tourism? How do you pick those people? I usually let tourism give me a recommendation of who they want sitting on the board. Okay, so they're pretty much, you, you don't pick them, they pick themselves. They, we appoint them. You appoint them. Yeah, we appoint them here through the court. But if if it's somebody that, that they recommend to serve to us and we don't have a problem with them, we appoint them on there. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to be appointed for that because I'd like to be on tourism. I got I know the people that's on tourism right now. There's husband and wife. They're on tourism. You got other people in here that support more people out of the county than they do me or anybody else. Nobody from tourism has even been there for two years. I've had so far this year. I've had Jordan Fox. I had a Thanked him for a thing for him to come out. We played bluegrass music. Thanked him for his service. Uh, the all timers uh, benefit and everything, which we raised money and everything. Nobody from tourism, nobody from the county, from the county judges or anybody, nobody shows up for that. We just had a flood relief thing last weekend, which we raised money for the flood victims down there. Nobody from the county come down, nobody from the judge's office, nobody come out for that. I got a toy drive coming up. I'm working with Big Hill Four Wheelers or Jeep Association with them now, and uh, Hands and Feet Ministry, and a couple other churches that I'm working with. Yeah. And you were to try to raise money and do things for kids this winter. But, uh, you know, I'd like to have some more support and stuff from the county because, like, uh, that's, that's going to, I'm trying to do the best I can to get people in this county. But if I can't get support from a county, the roads fixed and stuff like that, because when they come in, I go, I take them to the pretty house, which I got to drove those rough, rough roads too. And they come in here, and say, well, I ain't going back in there. My car got knocked my front end lineman out. I ain't going back in there. So they're, you know, you're putting my business down. That's knocking me out of business and knocking people out of, to uh, 
you know, coming in to spend money in your town, in the town and everything, because they don't want to come back because of the stuff like that. And, you know, that's, that's just bad. But, you know, they're, we wait, you know, I'm, I'm patient. I, just, I haven't been here this year. Last year I've met about every one of them. But it's getting, I'm, I'm getting tired of people, a lot of people's getting tired back in there because they come to me to find out. I'm speaking up for people that ain't out here that's got to work and got jobs. So I come out and speak for them also. So, you know, that's, that's one of the main things. It's like we're not getting nothing from the county. Your tourism board, they don't do nothing for me. Everything I do is comes out of mine and Angel's pocket. And we're doing more, we have more events there than anywhere else in the county in one year. Every Thursday I got open mic, Fridays I got uh, karaoke, Saturdays we got open mic again. A lot of times there's a band playing or something like that to entertain the people that come to the camp. So, you know, that's, that's my big concern because I take a lot of people on past Lake Street, Salt Rock and Wind Cave, take them to the cave, take them to the creek, take them to the pretty house, the natural bridges, and they're tearing their cars up and they don't like it. So if we're going to raise the county, I mean, even the county, the people's going to go back and they're going to say, hey, you know, uh, that, that place is rough back in there. They're, you know, it's nice, but they need to fix stuff. I've heard so many things. Hey, you need to get them to fix your road. I've heard that all summer long. But uh, I'm just here, and I'll be back next month to see. I'd like to see the roads done because we're, I'm really trying to help the county out, but there's nothing... I, I've seen I'm, the county do for me to, while I'm working. I'm, for I'm anticipating the next two or three weeks the road will be fixed back there. We're just waiting on to get this way. Yeah. Okay, well, that'll be seen. Because <laughs> I've done here a lot and it's not happened and yeah. it's yet to be seen. Did you have something? Uh, no. Okay. Right. I also had a thing about the roads, but you pretty much talked for me. Yeah. The roads okay. have been bad since that one road collapsed into my house. Yeah. You know, that so. Was the last thing there was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and it's yeah. still collapsing like you oh, see yeah. it collapsing places. Yeah. So, you definitely need to fix All right. We'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. So. All right. Next meeting is November 14th at 1 o'clock.